This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are down to the final four in the men's basketball tournament for 2023. We got two awesome games coming up on Saturday with the championship game coming up on Monday. We are here to break it all down with Dr. Ed Fink getting his read on the championship futures and talking about both those games on Saturday to let you know where he is seeing value right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer an analyst for numberfire.com joined here as mentioned by dr ed feng you can find his work over the powerrank.com and ed chaotic four days across men's college basketball we have now got i think pretty fun games i know people are talking about like the ratings and stuff like that but like from a game watching perspective i think fau san diego state uh miami yukon both those games should be pretty fun so i'm stoked for saturday how you doing today I'm doing great. I'm pretty stoked for Saturday too. It's been a pretty great tournament for me. Like I've really enjoyed trying to catch like every single minute that I possibly can this past weekend. It's been some pretty good basketball. It's been some exciting basketball. Uh, a lot of ups and downs for me. Obviously, it was pretty painful to watch Alabama and Houston go down within a matter of half an hour. Uh, yeah. Not at all what I expected. Um, obviously, I like both those teams coming into the tournament, and that didn't work out. <clears throat> Uh, you would like to see at least, I don't know. I felt really good about them. I had futures on both of them. I really thought like yeah. it was possible that they play in the championship game and they, and they just didn't get it done. That's college basketball. And I guess I could hide a little bit behind the fact that I think I wrote that like Alabama a couple weeks ago, that Alabama most years would be like a pretty strong two seed. Yeah. And not like the overall seed, which I think was true. I think they just played terribly against San Diego state. Like instead of passing the ball, they got bogged down into one-on-ones. But, you know, obviously was incredibly excited later to watch, uh, you know, Gonzaga. No, actually, that was the night before uh, to watch Gonzaga cover and then actually beat UCLA outright, which is pretty amazing. Um, props to Drew Martin, who's been all over Conference USA and FAU. I had him in my newsletter. He had FAU outright in the Elite Eight, and uh, that worked out as well. So that was a ton of fun. So just, you know, I just actually think just some great basketball, and it's been really fun to analyze these teams and, and to break down the final four teams like I do, you know, the primary contenders before the tournament, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, going back to that Gonzaga Thursday game, not the the blowout on Saturday, the Thursday game, um, that's kind of the joy of having a spread versus a money line. I had asked you on Tuesday, you know, any interest in the money line for Gonzaga? And you said, you know, I like the two and a half. I want to stand there. And when they were down one late in that game, you were cashing regardless. Fouls could have messed right. you up, but like you were good. And then they drain the three to take the lead. But yeah. um, it's kind of the beauty of betting is you don't always have to sweat that stuff if you if you find a better market. Um, I had the money line. I was sweating that a lot uh, for right. sure. But I mean, that game overall, even if you didn't have money on the line, just like a delightful game and kind of what we come for in these tournaments. So I know that like, again, the discourse has been it's not blue bloods not like these big names not huge markets but like from a just a an observer's perspective i feel like this year has been one of the more fun times i've had watching like the actual product thus far absolutely i mean it's been some incredible basketball and i think this is what we're getting in the future i think a lot of people who follow it more in depth than i do think the transfer portal is evening the playing field yeah. it's a lot of teams like fau to go out and get someone that really fills out their roster allows them to go nine deep um i think we're getting more of this which mm -hmm. kind of sucks because it makes my life difficult before the tournament because it's much harder to it's much harder to pick a champ now yeah I mean, you, you can obviously see that um but I think it's good for college basketball. And like, yeah. you know, like I said, I've been completely invested in, in in the games and that's been amazing. Engaging more fan bases is never a bad thing. And that's kind of right. what we're getting here. So we'll talk about 
how that parody discussion plays into futures for this year's tournament here in a second. We'll talk about uh, both those games go in depth on both the Saturday Final Four games in a second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Later on this week, tomorrow, I'll be breaking down uh, what my numbers are saying about MLB opening day, running through strikeout props, money lines, and much more. We'll also on Thursday have a preview of the women's Final Four with Justin Carter, uh, getting his read on those games futures market there as well both those podcasts going up on the covering the spread podcast feed and over on the FanDuel youtube page so make sure you are subscribed to get those as they are posted whether your bracket is busted still alive or you're just looking for another way to get involved in March Madness, FanDuel has you covered. That's why FanDuel and Xfinity Mobile are partnering to give you a chance to win a share of $10,000 for both the Final Four and the National Championship game. So $20,000 in total cash prizing. All you have to do is answer prop pick'em questions around in-game action inclusive of Xfinity Mobile themed questions. And the best part is it is free to play. Fans that answer the most questions correctly win a share of the $10,000 grand prize for that contest's round. The second round of this contest locks on Saturday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. So head over to FanDuel now to get in on the action. To enter, go to FanDuel.com slash free slash contest slash Xfinity Mobile Pick'em Roll. Again, Xfinity or FanDuel.com slash free slash contest slash Xfinity Mobile Pick'em Roll. No purchase necessary. Age and location restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See full terms at FanDuel.com. Xfinity Mobile has not sponsored or offered this promotion in any way. As mentioned, let's take it now to the futures market here, Ed, before we talk about both these games. And the theme throughout not just this tournament, but the entire year has been parity. The market here is showing a bit of confidence in UConn. Uh, they are minus 125 to win the national championship. And, you know, it's justified. They're a very good team, Ed. There is a reason they are there. They're a team you lo- talked about on our, our bracket stream before the tournament, too. They're very high in like analytical numbers and stuff like that. But we've seen a lot of parity. We've seen a lot of wonkiness so far. So does the parity we've seen give wiggle room to bet someone else inside this market? Or... Is UConn, in your eyes, definitively the best team here? I think that UConn is definitively the best team. And this is a pretty interesting exercise in how you want to rate UConn. I have an aggressive model that tends to react more to recent results. And obviously, UConn's been quite simply incredible in this tournament. A lot of part of that has come from hot shooting. But um, I mean, I don't think that completely explains the margin of victories they've put up. So when you look at my aggressive model, it will tell you that they're at 67% chance to, to win uh, the tournament, which obviously suggests value in this market. When you look at my model that tends to look more at season long results. So it will kind of average over the entire season and it will take, uh, you know, the same uh, it'll take the same contribution from the win against Gonzaga compared to the loss against Marquette in the Big East semifinal before the start of the tournament. Uh, I think they lost like six of eight games at one point in the Big East schedule. Uh, They were really good in the out-of-conference season. They had a little bit of a rough patch. I think the Big East is really good. I've seen some really good basketball coming out of that conference. Um, But when you average that, uh, when you look at a model that, you know, tends to uh, assume more regression to their true strength over the course of the season, it tends to rely on season-long averages I get about UConn at uh, uh, even odds to win the tournament. The markets seem to be splitting the difference. And I feel like it's a lot. It's the same as what we were talking about last week with Alabama. You know, my more aggressive model really liked the way they played. They had no idea that they were going to shoot 11% from three against San Diego State. Although I really feel like Alabama killed themselves by not passing the ball. Um, So I don't know. I passed on this market. If, if you really think UConn is as good as they, they look recently, you would clearly bet this. If you think you want to stick with more season-long averages, then then you wouldn't, and maybe you find some value. From watching this team, I mean, I've liked this team since before the tournament. Yeah, uh, You have a lot of future pros on this team. I think Donovan Klingon and Alex Caravan are going to be like two of the best players in the entire country next year. They're freshmen. They're not going anywhere. Like This, this team's going to be here again. 
I maybe know that that's here. They're, they're going to be a national title contender again, yeah. based on those two guys alone. Um, and that, and that's not even counting Jordan Hawkins and, and Andre Jackson that I presume are off to the NBA. I think teams will take them. I have no idea why Sonogo is not on NBA draft boards. I think any team would, would benefit from him. I think this is definitively the best team. We can talk about all the flaws of, of the other teams, but, but yeah, I like you. So I think the bigger takeaway here in terms of this market is you're not touching anybody else. If both your models say UConn is even money or better, that probably implies everyone else is not going to be a positive EV bed, regardless of what you want. Now, when we talked about college football, Ed, you mentioned that the more aggressive model has proven itself to be your better model between the two yep. you have been running. Now, with college basketball, it's a bit different because you've got a larger sample. You've got all these possessions. You've got a lot of data, more games and stuff like that. So what do you think is the the blend there? Do you think the more aggressive model in the long term will win out and be the better one? Or do you think that exploiting the big sample size we have is the preferred way to go? Blended model between the two? What do you think is the the better better route for college basketball specifically? The more aggressive model has been clearly superior over the later part of the season. Mm-hmm. Alabama game aside last week. Um, obviously, it's not going to be perfect. So I've, I've been really trusting the more aggressive model. I've been mostly betting based on that. And we'll talk about something a little bit later in the show. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, and that wasn't the case last year. So the the one that leaned more on season long averages was more accurate against the spread. Uh, I don't I don't really know. I don't really know what's going to happen last year, next year. I don't really know the reason why one's worked better this year and the other one worked better better last year but we'll we'll keep tracking it yeah um yeah we'll keep tracking it might be a season by season thing i think the explanation we had for football was transfer portal one thing but also like college players progressing like in season in a pretty tangible way do you think that would be the explanation for the basketball one performing the way it has as well I, I think so. I yeah. mean, you're getting more rosters that haven't played with each other, and then mm-hmm. you would expect they would get better towards the end of the season. And, and maybe that's what we're seeing with these teams here that have made it to the Final Four. Uh, that's certainly an explanation. Okay. So no value in the futures market as of right now, unless you want to buy fully into the aggressive model, which does like UConn at minus 125. Let's dig in now to these specific games coming up on Saturday, beginning with the first one. That is FAU against San Diego State right now. That spread is one and a half over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total is 131 and a half. Let's start things off with the spread here, Ed. A very tight one. You've been on FAU. You've liked them quite a bit. What is your read on the spread here against San Diego State? Yeah, I've been really uh I mean, not only telling my numbers, but also Drew Martin, who's noted just how well Conference USA teams have done this postseason overall. There are two of them playing tonight in the NIT semifinals. So the conference has done really well. Um, you know, my numbers have San Diego State by about two and almost two and a half points here. I kind of don't trust it. San Diego State is a great de- I, I use I try not to go against my numbers, but I really don't trust it here. San Diego State's a great defensive team, but I think they're they're really poor on offense. Like they've been hitting a bunch of contested jump shots to kind of get through these games. They have uh, just allowed. They're a great defensive team, so you know it's not. They're kind of like a Houston in a team that has been really good. They they kind of allow you to shoot the three, but don't let you make a lot of them. Yeah, the track record isn't quite as good as Houston, but it's not unreasonable to think that they would average like thirty percent three point field goal defense, maybe 31, 32, you know, a, a better than division one college basketball average, but it's kind of unthinkable that they'll continue to allow 11% from three, which is what they've done in the last two games. I just think San Diego state's really overrated. That that's mm-hmm. more of a take from watching them play. Um, I like this Florida Atlantic team. They're obviously not perfect. I'm still mad that they didn't cover against uh, FDU. Uh which which I had some money on, you know, you get five points of closing line value and you still lose right. and you just get angry at a team for just like running up and down the court with 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 the team. That's that's the only thing to do. Right. And they never really got it inside where they had a clear advantage over a very short team. But look, this FAU team is, is really good on both sides of the ball. They're they're uh, they're in the 20s on both offense and defense. When I look at adjusted points per possession, they go basically nine guys deep. So it doesn't really matter if one of them files out. Um, they're just a good basketball team. So 
I mean, I, I would kind of lean Florida. I haven't bet it, but I would definitely yeah. lean towards Florida. I, I would actually note that, like, you know, every other book I looked at earlier today is at San Diego State minus two. Um, FanDuel is definitely leaning towards Florida Atlantic. I think that's the right side. Um, so uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Owls make it to the title game. Yeah, that uh, plus one and a half right now is a minus 102 at FanDuel Sportsbook on the FAU side of things. So some balance there if you have two flat elsewhere. The three-point shooting discussion you had also does relate to the total. That's right now 131.5. If you think that San Diego State is playing in an unsustainable fashion in terms of their three-point defense, that might imply there could be some value in the over. Are you taking that, Ed? Or do you think this market is pretty fair? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm I not just because I do think San Diego State is a good defensive team. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think they're a good defensive team. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not too interested in betting it over right now. Yeah, uh, the money line for FAU uh, plus 114 right now. So again, make sure you're shopping around. I, I think that Ed, you said you have not bet this yet. What would you want that number to be? Because we do see public action in these games pretty often, which can move markets in a pretty significant way. Where would you want to see that number get to before firing on FAU, specifically talking about the spread? If it gets to two and a half, where your numbers have two and a half on San Diego State, would you take FAU at that time? Or is it likely going to wind up being a stay away for you regardless? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll monitor it. I want to see what yeah. Drew says about this game. Yeah. Uh, you can actually follow Alan Boston on Twitter. He actually writes up like some pretty in-depth things about uh, these teams. And uh, he's 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 been a winning college basketball better forever. So I would recommend following that. You know, I mean, I, I think I would like FAU maybe, maybe like plus 120 on the money line. Sure. Something like that. Uh, yeah. Maybe plus two and a half. We'll see. We'll see where the market goes. And we're pretty close to that right now. 114, again, is the number on the money line. So if we can get to 120, Ed might bite there. Two and a half potentially enticing him as well. So keep an eye on the market there for FAU and San Diego State. Second game on Saturday is Miami versus UConn. Right now that spread is five and a half with minus 110 on both sides. The total is 149 and a half. Let's start things off with the spread here, Ed. You mentioned that your more aggressive model is very high on UConn. Does that translate here to laying five and a half or is that enough? to keep you away right so the more aggressive model has this almost at seven and a half so mm-hmm. if you believe uconn is well, what they have been over the last four games you certainly want to bet that when you look more at season long averages it has that at uh minus four so it would suggest that miami perhaps has the edge here um i you know miami is pretty interesting because they're they're, they're kind of like gonzaga without drew timmy so they're really good on offense they're fourth in the nation and adjusted points per possession uh really get to the basket pretty well nigel pack obviously has like been amazing from behind the three they're terrible on defense they're 88th uh when i look at adjusted points per possession they don't have a lot of height uh that's really going to hurt against uconn i mean i think sonogo and Klingon can do whatever they want uh i mean miami does have some width down there which is going to help but they just don't have a lot of height um so yeah, I mean, you know, it's a pretty guard-based offense. Um, look, you have to be impressed with what, what Miami has done over the last two games. They really had a good second half against both Houston and Texas, two top five teams. I would only counter that a little bit by, like, I mean, Pat hit some incredible shots against Houston. Um, Miami was clearly the better team all around, but he did hit some incredible threes that was was able to stretch that spread. Texas was a team I never really could truly get behind uh, as a t- title con- contender. Um, just just didn't particularly like th- that set of players. Didn't really see that there was an alpha on that team that that I thought could that would really put them over the top. You got to give Miami credit for what what they did, but at the end of the day, I think I trust the more aggressive model. Um, I I did bet UConn minus five and a half here. I do think this gets higher uh, before tip, and. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think UConn is going to, you know, again, like I would feel better about this had like Alabama done better last right. week. because I feel like they're right. in the exact same situation and I'm still feeling kind of burnt from just how terribly they played. And UConn has been really hot from three. And of course, you can always go cold at sure. the wrong moment. And I mean, that's exactly what a Miami team that doesn't really get it done on defense would would need. And that can certainly happen. 
But from everything I've seen, from looking at kind of the matchups in in this game, uh, I, I did bet UConn minus five and a half. Okay, so Ed is on UConn minus five and a half here against Miami. The money line there is minus two forty five. Uh, the implied odds there seventy one percent. So another route there potentially if you think that UConn. Maybe a bit undervalued could look towards the money line as as well there at minus two forty five again. Ed's both Ed's models do imply UConn pretty heavily favored to win. Maybe not just uh, quite to seventy one percent, but Ed is taking the five and a half total in this game as mentioned one of forty nine and a half. You talked about Miami's defense. Talked about UConn's hot shooting. Any read for you on that one, Ed? I would definitely lean towards the under. I haven't mm-hmm. bet it. I feel like it's getting a little inflated from what Miami has done over the last two games. I don't think they're going to have similar success. UConn is is very good defensively. They have height. They they actually defend the dribble drive pretty well. I think they're going to make life pretty difficult for Miami. So I, w- I would lean under. I haven't bet it, but that's kind of my read on it. And it could be a situation again where if markets move later on this week, maybe that makes it a better one. So keep an eye on the total there. 149 and a half right now. If we get some movement towards the over there, maybe we want to bite in the under. But as of right now, it seems like UConn minus five and a half. Favorite way to bet this board right now. But Ed, we're not done with it yet because next week is the national championship game. On Monday, we're going to talk to you to get your read on that game. We'll talk to you about uh, what you're seeing there. Maybe talk some, you know, any any other takes you've got about that. We'll talk about that. Recap the final four as well. But Ed, it has been a delight to talk to you once again for today to preview the men's final four. Uh, what is going on for you over at the Power Rank right now? Yeah, I'm still running seven, uh, five nuggets Saturday. Um, <laughs> we went down to five. Just it, it allows me to put a little bit more effort into each one. Right. Make sure that that it is a little bit more stellar. It's also a little bit easier outside of football season. Um, so uh, it, it's my curated list of sports betting tips and bets and analytics and humor. I actually got a complaint about the humor this week, Jim. So Wow. Yeah, got a complaint. <laughs> Dang. Can't make everybody happy. They didn't uh, think it was I funny? It was kind of, what? They didn't think it was funny? They thought it was inappropriate, Jim. No, they, thought, no. they thought it was inappropriate. You're getting scolded. So, um, I don't know. I have a joy yeah. putting that together. Yeah. I, I get some real joy putting it together because uh, it, it allows me to kind of interact with people that I know. And yeah. I've had people like Drew Martin and Mike Craig, uh, you know, give me some of their takes for the newsletter. And, uh, you know, like if you want to wake up Saturday morning and you want to get down on something like, I, I'm I try to be there for you like every single Saturday and yeah. then also like kind of spread some uh tips in terms of uh you know just insights and stuff like I had some stuff about uh, I mean UConn was not actually in the preseason top 25 which yeah. is usually a warning sign but um but I, I you know I gave the reasons why I thought they were I, I mean I think the roster is awesome yeah sometimes you're wrong about that um so, uh, yeah, I talked about that. Actually, it had the MLB win total last week. Oh. So, yeah, I try to do everything there. So just check that out at thepowerrank.com. And, uh, yeah, I'll hook you up. I think the benefit, too, of seven or five. See, I did it, too. Five Nuggets Saturday is you get to amplify smart voices, people you respect. And right. if you respect them, that probably is a good endorsement to them. So you get to amplify them, spread their thoughts to other people. I think that that is a, a good platform to use for sure. Um, and uh, we can work on the humor. I've got, we can get some recommendations for you uh, in there as well. Yeah, I'm always looking for it, man. You text me anytime you got, you got good stuff. It, it gets hard outside of football season. Yeah. So we're going to go see then. Trevor Noah in Boston on April 15th. Oh, nice. So, yeah. We're, we're getting close there. And I should, shouldn't get my location away like that. Like I could get, I could dox myself here. But anyway, uh, I'll be seeing Trevor Noah then. So uh, we're, we're we'll, seeing him we'll some... in, uh, in, in October, I think. Are you? Okay. It's the same tour. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I'll let you know how it is. Maybe we'll get him on for five oh, nights. I'm, sure, I'm sure it's going to be great. Oh, yeah. It's Trevor. His Netflix specials are top notch. Yeah. All righty. Make sure you check out Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank. If you want to find Five Nuggets Saturday, Ed's podcast, everything over at thepowerrank.com. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. We are back again tomorrow, breaking down what my numbers are saying about MLB opening day in terms of strikeout props, money lines, and more. We'll talk to you then. And also again Thursday for the women's final four. We'll talk to you all in a very in just a bit. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 